Hi, I'm Luca Paris, and welcome to our culinary journey here at Monadnock Studios, our Monadnock Flooring and Culinary Journey Studios. I'm going to get that right sometime, and I'm here with a couple of guests today. We have Scott from Burbank Tile and Heather from Monadnock Flooring, right? Yes. Excellent. Just want to make sure you're there. And we're going to do chicken today, guys. Chicken three ways. It's going to be redundant in a little bit of a way because we're going to start off doing it the same way and then veer off because it's definitely one of those boring dishes. People think chicken, boring. That's all I can make. Well, we're going to make chicken really interesting today. We're going to do a chicken franchise, which is a lemon butter white wine chicken. We're going to do chicken marsala with a little creaminess to it and some great mushrooms. And then finally, artichoke and tomato. We might get a couple of flambés along the way. We're going to have a lot of fun. So it's all about chicken today, and your culinary journey starts now. Welcome back. It's all about chicken today. I'm here with Scott and Heather, and we're going to be making chicken three ways. But before I make my chicken, one of the things I've done on this show a lot was make roux, or talk about roux, and talk about how it's used to thicken sauces and soups and what have you. Well, because I'm going to need it today, I figured we'd make some too. So what I'm going to do is get about, I'd say a little less than a quarter pound of butter in there, and we'll get that started. We're going to let that melt down and we're going to add some, some flour to that and make a really quick roux and show you how easy that can be. So we'll let that melt down and melt, not boil down because you really don't want to overcook your butter. So we'll see how that goes right there. The next thing we're just going to do, we're going to prepare some chicken. Scott, you got to do me a favor. Sure. Grab some chicken out of the refrigerator for I'll me. Do it. All right. We're going to make chicken franchise, which is a lemon butter white wine chicken. Really simple. Uh, we're going to dredge the chicken in some flour. We're going to then... Uh, dip it in some egg batter, and we're going to put it all together really quickly. So let's do it from scratch. Let's get this chicken nice and thin. So when you go to a store and you buy chicken, you usually get these bigger breasts of chicken like this, right? But to cook them evenly, what I like to do is to cut them a little bit thinner. So we're going to do little mini medallions. So we'll just cut our medallions like this, just like if you were cutting you know, uh, off of a steak, something like that, these little medallions. And let's do a couple extra for me. There we go. Put that right there. We'll put this one away for now. But then we're going we're gonna to pound them out. So I have a little plastic wrap on here on my, my extra cutting board. And we'll get that down. And then we'll get some more plastic wrap and put it on top. Now while we're doing that, while we're getting that ready, this is what we want to do. We want to go back to our roux. You see how our butter is cooking down nicely? kind of just melting down there, we'll start adding our flour to this. And it's just about the same weight in flour as you have for butter. And this, this idea here is something you could use all the time. It's, it's a thickening agent. Now I'm going to shut off my heat. Now if you're doing Cajun, Cajun cooking, sometimes you do a darker roux. And that's usually start with that. In the cooking we want to do, we actually want to let this roux cool down a little bit. Turn down my pan a little bit. And this is our roux. Now we have to let it cool because we use a warm roux, a cool roux on a warm dish. And I'll show you about that a little bit later. Big thing we want to do over here is find my meat mallet. And sometimes if you don't have it around with you, which is what I don't have, maybe it's back here, we're going to use a different idea. You don't have a meat mallet, you have a pan. There you go. All right. And we're going to just flatten out a little bit this chicken. It's called improvising, right, Scott? If you don't have the right tools, just make sure you have another one. And actually, this works just as well, if not better. We're just going to flatten it out a bit. The reason why I wanted to flatten out the chicken breast is because I want it to cook evenly. I want that nice, you know, right across the board, we have this really nice combination 
of, of cooking all the way through nicely. We don't have any fat pieces. If we tried to do that bigger breast, we would sear it, and then we'd have to finish it in the oven, and the tail end would be dry, the other side wouldn't. We're going to try and go for really moist here. So let's bring our flour back in the mix and our egg. And we've done our chicken. So everything that we're going to do from this point on is going to be almost the same in each dish. We might not use the egg each time, but we'll do the flour definitely. So we're going to get our chicken. We're going to season it a little bit because we like to season as we go. A little salt and pepper and my Ariosto spices. While I'm doing that, let's just introduce Scott a little bit. Scott, Burbank Tile, Burbank Stoneworks, both businesses. And you're responsible for the countertop. That's right. Yeah. As well as some other things. This is a granite countertop, Scott? This is granite, yeah. Yeah, the and it's gold. absolutely beautiful. That's where you got this big piece out yep. of, too. And it's actually all over the place. And uh, this, has been a, this has been a great place for me to work. I'm really enjoying it. And, and the tile, or the tiling on the wall behind me, too, as well as the stuff on the floor you put all together. That's correct, yeah. yeah so it's been a lot of fun. Stuff. Yeah. And now you get to eat. This is how I pay <laughs> you. I pay this you in food. <laughs> I sometimes work for food. You do. <laughs> Pretty much like anybody around me. <laughs> Even ask my staff at the restaurant, they're the same way. So we're going to get our chicken in the flour. That's been nice and seasoned, right? Simple. Heather, do you cook chicken at home often? Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. Have you ever made a dish, dish like this? No, I've made chicken marsala. OK, cool. So the next segment, if I get hurt or anything, you can take over, right? Possibly. All right, that's <laughs> what I like to see. Oh, let's get that in the pan. Now, what I like about the chicken fran and, and the idea of, of how this is made is that the egg actually helps as a coating to the chicken. Uh, it keeps it even moister. And the flour is there to protect and uh, help for the sauce later. But this way, it's incredible. Well, we're running out of room in that pan, so it's just going to be the, those guys there. So let's move this one over behind me. And let's, let's watch how this cooks up quickly. Now, what you want to get in here, we have the pan heating up. You get that, OK, going back to caramelization, which we talk about in almost every one of my shows, the nice brown. Almost a chicken franchise just means French cooked chicken. And what I liken it to is French toast. You know, you want to get that, mm -hmm. that batter on the French toast, right? So we, we get the French toast feel to it. Now, turn it down to medium. Watch how quickly this sauce comes together. We get our shallots. We get our garlic. I don't add anything into the pan. I like cooking with one dish. I mean, I'm all about the one dish cooking. So I like just taking one dish and cooking because uh, I hate cleaning up. We're going to do a little bit of lemon juice and some thin sliced shallots, not too much, and garlic. So this whole show, what we're going to show you is the, the procedures and technique versus actually having to come up with different ones every time. You could cook from here. You can make any sauce, but our sauce is rather simple. It's got white wine and lemon juice. A little bit of vegetable or chicken stock. And then what I'm going to do is cut up a couple uh, lemons in there to impart a little more flavor, and there'll be a nice garnish near the end. Now, right now, what we have here is a little bit liquidy, right? We got, you smell that lemon? Okay, just get all that lemon. Lemon and chicken just go so well together. One of the things I like to add to a dish like this is some color. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add some tomato. And if I get this on all the way, we're going to add some asparagus to it, too. So we'll get my asparagus started. Now watch how easy it is to make some really good asparagus. All right? Take it on the pan, a little bit of oil. And I'm sure if you were at home, you'd have a little, have a little more room to prepare everything. You don't have to do it all in your one hand. We'll get it on the grill, so by the time the chicken is done, Medium high, a little bit high. We'll get nice, nice grill marks on that. I, I like when my uh, asparagus has really nice crunchiness to it, so I don't boil it ahead of time. Put a little bit more stock in this. We want to cook the chicken all the way through. And I think you can get to see that I don't like to put anything in the oven, right? Mm -hmm. So and, and, I, and they're thinner. They're perfect size where they're going to cook through and they're going to stay nice and tender because you know you're not overcooking them. Then we're going to take our tomato here, and we're just going to call what we're going to call uh, basically what we're going to do is just take out the inside, 
And I really just want the outside. I want, I want the skin on, but I don't want all those seeds. So I'm going to use them as almost a garnish to our sauce. Just a little bit of tomato on that. And our garlic's really grilling away over here. There we go. Let's turn that down so this way it doesn't get overly done. We'll add a little bit of that roux we made to our sauce here. Now this roux you can keep for a long time. I mean, we're talking about a couple of weeks in the refrigerator, and you could use it on any liquidy or watery sauce. And then we finish it off like there's not enough in there. <laughs> finish it off with a little butter, just a little, to get some creaminess going to the dish. Now, looking good so far? That looks dynamite. Fresh parsley. Make sure the roux is incorporated in nicely as I drop stuff. There you go. So we want to make sure it's a creamy sauce. There you go. See how that, that sauce is turning out into a nice creamy sauce? All right. So let's get our dishes out. Bye-bye, chicken. We'll use you in your next segment. How's that? All right. Get our chicken out, our dishes out. Another pair of tongs. Real simple with this, the, the asparagus. We'll do one last minute thing with the asparagus. Kind of bring over that flavor, right? A little more lemon juice on there. There we go. Got everything off. Salt and pepper, salt and pepper. Voila. Now, if you, if you, if you like your asparagus a little more cooked, you'll probably uh, you'll probably say, ah, I would like to blanch it off. Two rules of thought with asparagus, or most vegetables I like to cook with. One is uh, you need to blanch it so you get, you get all the flavor you can, or, or get it soft enough. Uh, or the other one is to not blanch it and just saute and get all the flavor you can. One is French, one is Italian. Apparently, I like the Italian way. And uh, I just think it, it tastes so much better that way. And we'll put a little sauce on there. It's not too heavy, the sauce, either. It doesn't have to be, or it can be, whichever way you like. Our first dish is done. <laughs> I can't tell you what time it is. But in record time, ladies first. Grab that. Thank you. That's Thank yours, you. chicken Thank franchise. You. Next thing, we're going to come back and do chicken marsala with a little bit of cream to it. So don't go away, because it just gets better and better. And we're going to build up to tomato and artichoke. So enjoy, guys. Go ahead, Thank dig you. in. Dig in. You got wine, you got chicken, and we'll see you in a culinary minute. Is that all right? Mm. Excellent. It, oh, hi. <laughs> you caught me. Welcome back to A Culinary Journey. I'm with Scott and Heather. We're having a glass of wine. Cheers uh, to our chicken experience. You know, uh, we're going to be doing chicken, and we just did chicken franchise, and we're going to be moving on to chicken marsala with a little bit of cream in it. Now, on the one before, if I learn how to turn on this oven, see what happens when you have the wine? Anyway, the one before, uh, what we did was thicken with the roux. And by, by using the cream, we're going to actually be able to thicken without the roux. And the final one, we're going to use tomatoes. So we have a lot of different uh, nuances going on here. So we have our chicken already pounded out, because watching me do it more than once is kind of boring. And in this case, instead of, um, instead of dredging it in the, in the egg, we're going to make the chicken right in just the flour and seasoned flour. So I've seasoned the chicken. We season the flour, we're letting the pan heat up. And again, nice and thin, smaller medallions. You know, I like them smaller, too, because you could, you could take care of them easier. You know they're going to cook all the way through. They're pounded out thin. And if, you want, if someone wants to eat a lot, like, could, could come over here. He'll eat a heck of a lot more than she'll eat. Let's just put it that way. And if you want more, I just make you more, right? Absolutely. Although, I think Heather ate more the last time. She's a big eater. <laughs> so let's get those in the pan and start getting them cooked up. Now, whereas sometimes I'd like to get ingredients in and then add the meats later, like if I were doing fish or whatever. I want the chicken to cook all the way through. And I want to cook it all in the same pan. So what I'm going to try and do here is get the chicken cooked on one side. And then we're going to add our ingredients. And that's where we do our little mise en place here. So we have, say goodbye to our, our last two pieces, which I'll make later. And we're going to get on what we need next for this dish. So we're going to need a little bit of garlic. We're going to need just a hint of lemon juice, because I love mushrooms with lemon. And we're going to use these mushrooms. These are portobello mushrooms, uh, also known as, well, no, they're known as portobello. 
They they're come from Kermiti mushrooms, which are the smaller ones that are also known as baby bella. But what's funny about portobello mushrooms, these are just oversized Kerminis. And Kerminis used to be, uh, back in the early part of the 1900s, the mushroom of choice. And in the 1940s, those French white button mushrooms that we all know, they came on the scene. And they kind of took over. And the Kerminis repackaged themselves as larger portobello mushrooms. And uh, ever since then, they're some of the most popular around. I love the portobello mushrooms because they're meaty. And they have a lot, a lot of flavor. Along with that, one of my other favorites is the shiitake, which we're going to leave whole. So we got those two of our mushrooms, our mushrooms for the dish. We're going to get some herbs together also. <coughs> In this case, we're going to use a little bit of thyme. And that's all we have is a little bit of thyme. And some rosemary, some fresh rosemary we'll chop up. I just, and we'll put it in last minute. We won't do them too early in the dish. And yeah, let's stick with those two. And we'll just chop those down. Now what I'm doing is basically mise en place. As this chicken's cooking, what a good thing to do is have all this stuff already ready. But it's actually more fun to show you on camera cooking it. So, and then this way, when you go to prepare your dish, you'll have everything ready. So we have our chicken cooking. Look at that. We get some nice browning on the outside. Let's turn this down just a little bit. And the chicken's cooking all the way through. To keep it moist and tender, one of the things about chicken is that it dries up kind of quickly. One of the things I like to do to keep it moist is actually cook the sauce with the chicken. Some people would take the chicken out now and cook the sauce. I'm not a big fan of that. Once we've turned it over, we could add the mushrooms in. And if you like mushrooms, this is a great dish for you. We could add the garlic. We didn't add it too early because we didn't want it to burn, right? We add some more seasoning. And in my case, my adiosto spice and some salt and pepper. And just a hint of lemon juice. For people who've never tried lemon juice with, uh, with um, mushrooms before, you're going to notice that it really has, a, it brings out a lot of natural flavors in it. And that little sparkle goes a long way. Now, you said before we started, Heather, that you make chicken marsala at home. Mm -hmm. Am I kind of close to what you do? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I like a lot of garlic. You like a lot of garlic. Mm -hmm. OK, well, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. I, have, I hope you have no clients to go see wow. today. <laughs> and then we're going to take a little, we're going to let that cook down. We're going to take some marsala wine, of course, to be safe. Let's see if we could uh, set off some alarms here. There you go. Let's turn that down. And let's just let that kind of reduce. Some fresh parsley in there while that's reducing. Now, I, I don't like the mushrooms cooked down too much. I just like a little bit of that crunch, but you want to bring out the flavor of the mushrooms. So you just kind of bring them around in the sauce. Now, I rem remember I mentioned we're going to do a little twist, like a creamy marsala? Sure. And that's where we're going to add the cream in now. And that's going to bring the whole dish together. Sometimes I like to see cream sauces come together. It's just nice. So as we let that kind of reduce, one of the things about cream sauces, you don't have to do too much to them. You let them reduce, and they'll take care of themselves. And then we'll add our herbs. Um, the, we're at the Monadnock uh, Flooring Design Center. And in the design center, when you walk in and see my set, we are going to have live audiences for that set. So when you come in and see it, you're going to see some beautiful tile work, which Scott did all of. And you did a great job with it. It took, so, it took a long time to put this place together, huh? It was, it was a lot of fun. They, they yeah. let us play a little bit in here. And you even have this, this coolest thing. It's like a circular bathtub. We've had a lot of uh, requests for something that an older, an older person would be able to get into without having to step over a curb. Right. And it, it contains it. It's a spiral stand-up shower. And just walk right in, spiral, yeah. all tiled up. That's, That's pretty been, amazing. It's been fun. It took a lot longer to put together than this dish, right? A little bit. Come, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And speaking of the dish, it's starting to come together. We're getting the mushrooms together, the chicken. The chicken is cooked. You could kind of get a little press test on it uh, if, you're, if you're concerned about if you know how to cook it long enough. If you turn it over, you see I've done some nice caramelization to that. And we've got the nice marsala flavors in there. Let me finish it with a, just a little bit of salt and pepper because I think we'll need it. And this dish, unlike the other one where you put it on top of cooked, um, on top of cooked asparagus, what I'm going to do is we're going to place it on. I'm going to show you something really cool right now, too. Our cream sauce is coming down a lot. I wanted to almost break it where it starts falling apart. I don't know if you guys could see that there, but see how the, it's starting to break apart from itself? Yeah. Well, one of the magic of, oh, that's, that's the marsala. <laughs> Maybe I should label my own stuff. The magic of adding a little bit of water to anything is 
allowing the sauce to come back together. In this case, I added a little bit of stock. And we kind of bring that around and shut it off. And you're going to create a little more sauce to it. See, it starts coming together already. I think you can see it on screen a little bit better. But we'll get that over the top of that. And we'll get this one ready also. So nice and easy. I get to play two at a time now. This makes it a little more fun. There you go. And that sauce. Let's bring, bring a little bit more stock into the sauce. And we'll see how it just kind of creates a nice, so nice clear sauce for that. See that? That's beautiful. All right. Let's pour a little bit of mushroom and chicken over here. We've got one more dish to go. Really simple. Tomato artichokes, a little brandy flambe. We're going to have a lot of fun with that one. And we'll go to a quick little culinary minute. And we will be back, my lady, for Thank you. you. Monsieur, for you. Thank Enjoy. You, I just have to get you some silverware. You're going <laughs> to just share hers. Some white wine. We have chicken marsala with a little cream. More to come in a culinary minute. Hi there, I'm Luca Paris, and like a kid in a candy store, walking through your kitchen store and finding some great products. And you know what? We, we're going to be doing shows on um, Asian cuisine. And one of the things that everybody talks about is, is cooking with a wok. And, and how is that different, Dean, than cooking with a regular pan like I'm using right now? With a wok, you're doing very high heat and very high fast cooking. In the old days, when woks first came to the United States, they had rounded bottoms and you had to put a ring on your burner and set it on top of that right, ring. Right, right, right. It had nothing to do with the actual cooking process. It had to do with the types of stoves that were in the, in the Chinese regions. So they've become very Americanized and they do flat bottom woks now. So you can put it right on your own burner. But the idea of these is to heat very high and very fast. Now, it's great for sauteing or, or stir frying. Stir frying, absolutely. Getting, and getting good uh, uh, hot oil in there and just cooking it up, and we're talking about minutes to make things. Right? Very, very short. And then if you have some things that take longer, you can move some things up onto the, side, the side, on the slope yeah. side, and let the other stuff down at the it, bottom. It's part. incredible cuisine, because one thing it does is, since you're cooking quick, and you're keeping a lot of the nutrients in there, and it's really healthy for you. Yes, absolutely. It's a lot easier to cook Chinese food, or Asian food, at home than most people think. Everyone thinks it's complicated, all it's not. All you need is the right equipment. And Dean is the guy to ask the questions for. Walk cooking, taking a walk on the wild side. <laughs> I'm a funny guy. That's your Culinary Minute. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. We're back on a culinary journey. We're having a good time here with Heather and Scott. Um, and we're cooking chicken all day. How was the chicken marsala, guys? Did you enjoy that? Very nice. Yeah. Awesome. So again, we're bringing back the whole concept. We've already seen how to flour, how to pound. So we're right there at that stage. Now let's just bring in some different nuances to what we're doing here. Let's talk a little bit of tomatoes and shallots and a little bit of brandy and artichokes. So we got some nice things to put in here. Flipped over the chicken. We'll get the tomatoes in because we want them to cook down. Uh, it seems like chicken and tomatoes are just like a perfect combination uh, to make any dish. And these grape tomatoes are awesome because they're nice and sweet as well as a little bit of acidity. And then we're going to add some artichoke hearts. Uh, these artichoke hearts, you can get the ones just in the brine. These artichoke hearts are actually in olive oil and they have the stems on them. They come from Italy like this and they're just really nice, great flavor. So if you can find these, that's great. But the ones in the brine work just as well. We'll just kind of marry that around. We've got some of our shallots in there. And we're going to let this dish cook down a little bit. And so we don't dry out the chicken. We've got to get the moisture in there also. And then our garlic. Nice and simple, right? We're following the same pattern on each. Mm -hmm. A little salt and pepper, which we did before. And a little bit of adiosto. Yeah. That'll be some nice <clears throat> what is that, uh, What's that seasoning you keep putting in there? Adiosto, is, it's, it's my own version of bam. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so basically what it is is a blend of uh, 13 different spices and herbs that we pulse together. Sure. We take... In, in my version, we take a bunch of salt and then the other 12, and you pulse it all together, and it just it gives that back back flavor that I have for what we do in our cooking. And if you have your own type of seasoning, it's always nice to go that way. All right, we're gonna flambe because this is a nice flambe dish. We'll get a good amount of brandy in that pan. We get it up. That was a good one, huh? That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. That actually scared me. <laughs> Awesome. That's all about the show, you know? 
And then we're going to get some vegetable stock in the pan. Now, now flambéing, really, when you're at home, the best way to do it is take it off the pan, uh, take it off the stove, put it on very gently, because that's all ca catching fire. You know, this, all this fat molecules jumping up, and they're bringing the brandy and alcohol with it, and then the heat just ignites it. It's, I mean, it's just simple combustion. But what you really, really want to do is do want to take some of that, that top, um, almost astringent flavor of the alcohol off so it's nice and it's got some nice flavors to it and it adds to the sauce versus taking away. Let's get a good amount of stock in here so we can bring those flavors in there. That's one. And where are we? Just move our garlic around. Now our garlic's cooking in here. We have the flambe. We have all everything kind of working itself together. The artichokes actually add a natural sweetness to anything. Artichokes themselves, when they cook, um, will actually make the next thing you eat after it sweet. So with white wine, not always the best combination. There's only certain wines that do well with artichokes. Prosecco or champagne goes very well with artichokes. But certain wines actually get affected by them. Pretty interesting. And then we're going to just add that roux we, we made earlier in the show. Right? So we have our brandy, we have our roux, we have all our flavors in there. And that roux will start to thicken the sauce rather quickly. We can almost shut the sauce off and let it finish the rest of the way by itself. Now, I did mention about uh, lemon juice as far as lemons go. I do like a little lemon juice in almost everything I do, or some type of acidity. I think acidity is important to give a balance of flavor. So we'll just add a little bit of lemon juice. What I didn't do, and you know, since we're at Monadnock Flooring, Matt decided to tell me I, was, I made a mistake the last time. But what I didn't do is actually squeeze the lemon up so the pits don't fall out. So by doing that, I'm getting juice down. And if, if you have any nicks on your hands, you're making sure you're <laughs> feeling all of it. So, so we'll just let that come together. You see how that came together with a nice sauce, too? Look at that. That's nice. Beautiful sauce just kind of coming on through. This one's lighter, a little more vibrant, a little very, very simple. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up for our show. Guys, I hope you had a nice time today. It was very nice. Yeah, you enjoyed all the food. Mm -hmm. Make some of this at home. And uh, hopefully, um, yeah. Hopefully you try something different and realize, you know, it's not all about the recipe. It's about the technique. And you could do this technique with just about anything. So we take a little bit of fresh herbs at the end, garnish the plate. And it's very, very simple to make. And we made three great chicken dishes. We had a good wine. We had a little bit of fun along the way. Most of it off camera, but we'll tell people about that <laughs> later. And uh, that's pretty much a wrap. We've got three chicken dishes. Great show, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Heather from Mananuk Flooring, yeah. Scott from Burbank Tile and Burbank Stoneworks. Thanks, guys. It was Thank a great you. time. Awesome. And that's about it. I'll see you next time on A Culinary Journey.